Welcome to another edition of Wordy Screencast. We're continuing with our nonfiction reading. We are on to the signposts. Yesterday, we learned about numbers and statistics. Today, we're going to focus on quoted words. Why authors include them? What kind of conclusions can we draw? What can we learn by focusing on the quoted words of a nonfiction text? Let us continue. So, quoted words. I want you to write this down. In your notebooks, continuing right after numbers and statistics, second signpost, quoted words. Note, the author quotes a voice of authority, a personal perspective, or other's words. When you see that, you ask yourself, why did the author quote or cite this person? And that, you should write down. Now that you've written that down, that will give you some insight into identifying the author's purpose. Why did the author write this? making some inferences and drawing some conclusions, thinking critically about the article, determining the point of view of the author, and really getting to what opinion might they have, what is their stance on an issue, is there any bias, is this truly credible? And we're building toward figuring out what the author's purpose is in writing and being skeptical about all nonfiction texts. Because nonfiction appears to tell us something about our world but it is not guaranteed to be factual or accurate or even true. Fake news! Anyway, so take a minute, write those down. So let's break this down. Personal perspective. This means somebody who lived through something. So, for example, back after Hurricane Harvey hit Texas in, uh, during the summer of 2017, People might have wanted to interview people who live there, people who live through the hurricane and the floods. And as you can see, this was a highway and submerged in the water. Not good, obviously. So maybe you quote somebody who lived through that, just to add a little bit of perspective, some interest to the article. Voice of authority. This is a person with expertise in an area. For example, if you were going to write an article, or do a piece on music and what makes good music, you might want to quote somebody such as Ed Sheeran. Conversely, if you were going to do something on science and pediatric neurology, you might want to interview Dr. Ben Carson. He is, you may not know him, before getting into politics, he was uh, one of the premier pediatric neurosurgeons down at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, so he would know something about pediatric neurology. An expert. He has expertise in the area. Just because somebody is an expert in an area doesn't make them a person of authority in all areas. Uh, we will look at an example of that later. All right. Others' words. This you'll see a lot in like research articles, research papers. It's basically the citations. We do the MLA formatted citations of the author's last name and page number. You'll see some of that stuff instead of direct quotations. We're really going to focus on direct quotations, though. I just want you to realize that. So why might somebody use quotes? It's an interesting thought. Oh! Makes the text more interesting. We've talked about this. We'd rather read dialogue than straight prose. But also to prove a point. So we might quote somebody who's an expert in an area or has lived through something that supports whatever the central idea of the article is whatever it is we're trying to teach other people or communicate to other people. We'll go over Jay Wright in class today. So really just make sure that you know these things when it comes to quoted words. We'll practice with this. Coming up soon, yo, 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 Wardy out.